Information is power. Listening to Information Man, please make sure to subscribe to his channel. everybody welcome to the information man uh show thank you thank you uh just a couple of days ago i did a video about the fact that in california where i live at we're on a lockdown uh which is going to go from uh saturday 11 20 uh saturday the 21st of november all the way into december 21st um which means there will be a limited curfew it'll be a curfew from 10 p.m to about uh 5 a.m in the morning in California, this is the second lockdown that we've been on. Uh, other countries have tried this. Uh, when I looked at this issue, I thought, okay, are the lockdowns effective? And now as I do more research and people have sent me comments on that particular video, there are people that are saying that um, due to this virus, uh, that uh, lockdowns actually uh, maybe add or don't, or maybe they don't in, uh, make anything better. Because uh, I'm going to play some audio for you from England, uh, Great Britain, because I think in Great Britain, they are on a lockdown and a lot of the folks out there are in uproar about it because the the uh, the running uh, theory out there or, or thought, and I'm going to look at some data for you, is that lockdowns don't uh, actually curve this particular virus. And then we need to define what is a lockdown. For example, school cancellations for lockdowns are not considered a, a cancellation of schools, your kids being able to go to school. Uh, researchers say that's an excellent decision. They don't consider that a lockdown. When you're driving your car, you're going to a testing checkpoint or you're going through a drive through for getting tested. That is not considered technically a lockdown. They say that that is effective and trying to fight the virus when you at least identify who may potentially have the virus, who could be a carrier of it. And then the whole issue of wearing a mask, I know that that is um, something that a lot of people have different opinions about, uh, but they're saying that the mask in itself actually is effective. 
the other things. Now we know that people are going to gather. And let, 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 let me uh, let me uh, read this to you. Travel restrictions, like set, setting up interstate checkpoints with mandatory testing at state border borders, are not lockdowns, according to the research here. And this research is coming out of. Uh, let me see right here. This is the uh, AEI institution. And you can look this up. It's called Lockdowns Don't Work. Um, lockdowns don't work. They're simply, they're, they're simple, a sentence enough to ignite a firestone or controversy around this issue. The article is citing, and it talks about simply this, that there are another time tested strategies for disease to fight diseases. Uh, travel restrictions are highly effective. And while a great inconvenience to the public aren't actually uh, forcing you to stay locked down at home. Okay. Uh, moderate assembly limits such as bans on assemblies over a hundred people are not lockdowns. So if you say we don't want an assembly of a uh, of hundred people, According to this study, they're saying that that's not technically a lockdown. It's not a lockdown. Most major virus outbreaks have been linked to large gatherings of people. So, 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 so bans such as bans making scientists sense, even as they also represent fairly moderate restrictions on individuals behavior. So let me read that again, because I, such as a ban on assembling of over a hundred people are not lockdowns. Most major virus outbreaks have been linked to large gatherings of people. So such bans make scientific sense, even as they also represent fairly modest restrictions. So there is history. There is data to show that banning large gatherings has had an effect, but this whole idea of telling you just to stay home does not really have this uh, complete effect as you may think it does uh, in this world that we're living uh, with this virus here. So I want people to think about what I just read, what I was just saying there. And I want people to give me, uh, give uh, everyone to hear your comment in the comment section. I want you to write honest statements as to whether you think that lockdowns are effective or they're not effective at all. And while you're doing that, I want you to give me the biggest favor, ladies and gentlemen, by going ahead and uh, subscribing to the Information Man show. I appreciate that if you could do that. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. Appreciate that uh, so much. If you could definitely do that. I appreciate everybody out there that's been rocking with the channel. So what I want to do here is that when you're at home, uh, as you see this young man right here, uh, you get bored, right? You're trying to figure out what do you do to uh, keep yourself amused? Do you um, clean a house up? Do you do it? Do you write? Do you move furniture around as you can see I'm doing there? Um, do you look at television? Do you kick back, have a drink like the brother's doing there? You uh, play around with your phone. And as you can see, do you uh, spend your time um, sweeping in the house? What do you do? Uh, do you get on the Zoom? Do you get on the YouTube to try to keep yourself uh, sort of entertained? Because humans, we get bored when we're stuck in the house and we can't do anything else but stay just in the house. It's not uh, natural for us to just stay in, in the house 24-7. And then when you go out in the streets, this is where a lockdown looks. You see only a few cars. This is in Los Angeles, California. You see only a few cars out there on the streets moving about. And what have you now, let me read this to you as you look at that and you see that this coronavirus has had some effect. This virus has had some effect uh, in society. Centralized quarantine orders where individuals who test positive or individuals who have had contact with the virus infected people are forced to be quarantined for several for seven to 14 days. Okay. Or 21 days in hotels or special uh, purpose space are a extreme effective way to fight 
this particular virus, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, this is how, um, you know, in Israel and other parts of the country, this is what they've been doing. Now, of course, we live in America where we don't like being told what to do. Americans are people who we feel very independent. We like our freedoms. We like our freedom of speech. We like our second amendment, to, which is the right to bear your arms. Uh, Americans like to come and go as we please. We don't want people telling us uh, what to do, how to do it. And so in other countries like China and other countries where they have a more dictative government, they were able to, uh, tell their people exactly this is what you're going to do. You're going to wear a mask. You're going to uh, stay in your home and what have you. And you can say, well, that's probably why some of those countries early on were having some success because they had more control over their society. But what we're also finding out as you have doctors trying to figure out what are they going to do to fight this particular virus is that we're seeing that other countries are having a spike and America is having a spike. The difference between America and other countries is that America does not have a nationalized system and how um, under the Donald Trump administration, there's been no national uh, uh, protocol for how to deal with this virus. You're simply leaving individual states um, to their own demise to figure out what they're going to do and what they're uh, not going to do. Other countries have a national, um, you know, had a national plan. But you see right here, this was what you saw in uh, uh, China. I didn't see this anywhere in America where you had people in hazmat suits walking around in the streets, spraying everything, spraying buildings and what have you. And according to some data, right, there's, uh, there's scientific data, and you can go and Google this, where they're saying uh, that there may be evidence that this virus isn't necessary. You're not uh, at risk for touching surfaces because this virus is uh, according to the data, because you never know who you can believe that the virus is more airborne in its nature and how it, you contract it versus you touching surfaces, but you don't know what to believe because CDC scientists, Fauci, the whole bunch of them, they're telling us different things all the time, and we're trying to figure out how to make sense of protecting us ourselves in this world right now when we're dealing with this particular uh, virus that you can see on the screen. We're trying to figure out um, what do we do? You know, it's, uh, it's the world versus this, uh, this creature, this, uh, this virus, you know, and there's many... Uh, different opinions. Is it man-made? Was it made in a laboratory? Is it a biological weapon? Or is it something that was created by um, nature? Is it really something that comes from bats and bat soup and things of this nature? Um, what do we know? We know that they are quick to say that they're going to have um, a vaccine. And now we're finding out that they're taking a, they're taking a step back on whether these vaccines are ready to go. There's reports that, oh, it's 97 percent, 95 percent. They're giving you all different percentages, whether this vaccine that they have on the way um, is effective. And then the question you must ask yourself, are you willing to take this vaccine and what are your rights when it comes to how to legally decline the vaccine and whether you want to even uh take such a thing when you don't even know what are the side effects of a drug or a, of a vaccine that's been rushed to the market so quickly when uh, remember back in uh, let's see, let's go back to when you had uh, the measles shot. Do you know that we, we can learn a lot from history when they introduced uh, when measles were running rapid through the country um they rushed a measles vaccine to the market for kids. And when they first gave it to children without having really good sound testing for it, um, you know, you have to test against, you need empirical evidence, test against reality. They found out that a lot of the children actually uh, had uh, passed away, had died when they were given the first batches of the first um, measles vaccine. So that's why, you have to be critical. And where I live at in California, we have a governor 
who actually said, tells us, do as I say, but don't do, 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 do as I say, okay, but don't do as I do. This man, Governor Newsom, recently went to a gathering with special interest. These, these politicians are enough to, um, are enough to make you, uh, you know, laugh. And so Gavin Newsom came out saying, I apologize for going to a gathering where there were a lot of people not following the very things that he is preaching to us. So when you, you see all the things that are going on, it makes you a little skeptical about whether a lockdown is effective and these vaccines that they want to introduce to the public. It makes you say, Hey, let me put my hand up keep that vaccine away from me. I, I don't want that because you can't tell me what are the long-term effects of this rush job, this rush um, vaccine that people are waiting for um, and that we've been told about. Now, let me read this here. This is uh, another important one that I want to get into around this issue of this virus, this, uh, this nasty little thing that's been running around requirements that people wear masks are not considered quote unquote a lockdown. Now for some people in America, we don't like it because every state is doing what every state wants to do. So you have states like Georgia at one point in time, Texas, where you have people who don't want to um, wear the mask. And I know that people have their various opinions about how harmful the mask is to you or how, uh, how well it helps you to decrease the, uh, the, um, the potential of getting uh, this particular virus. We have a president um, and Donald Trump who uh, made fun of masks, said that masks were weak. And of course, according to reports, he caught the coronavirus. So we may believe that he caught the coronavirus because you never really know the tricks and the games that are played on the public and how the media can also be used to manipulate you. Um, and as, and as these political parties both play games, the Republican party plays games, the democratic party plays game. And then you have the media in the middle who plays both sides at ladies and gentlemen. So as we're looking at that, what you see on there, the, the, the doctor holding the, the virus, this is what we call affected blood in that, in that, uh, container that she has there. Uh, which doctors are going to have to figure out what are they going to do to figure this out? And the truth of the matter is there have been a lot of uh, these, these di there's different types and I'm saying virus because you know how YouTube is, you know what virus I'm talking about. And you know that there's different strands and different types of this virus. And has there ever been a vaccine to effectively impact this particular virus that we're dealing with, that these, this particular virus that has many different strains of it, and this is just one, neuro, meaning new, or it's a new situation. So they tell us. So the doctors are out there trying to figure out what they want to do while we sit at home, bored out of our minds, trying to figure out what we're going to do. Okay. Now, mask, according to scientific studies, masks, uh, scientifically, prove to reduce how many such uh, droplets are spread by affected people. So the qu question is, does the mask, what a kind of a mask, you know, what kind of mask do you have that can effectively keep the droplets or this airborne virus from affecting you? Because many, because many infected people who wear a mask jogging down the sidewalk, wearing a mask, at a restaurant, wearing a mask, sitting at your desk at work, wear a mask universally, a mask wearing um, in a single best way to reduce the spread of the respiratory disease that we find ourselves battling uh, in the world and particularly in America. Now, I want to play an audio for you because they're saying that in other countries where they did have a restrictive, restrictive locked down that there may be put, there may be evidence that their restrict their strict lockdown. And these are countries where it's complete dictatorship. They're finding that the lockdowns 
opposed in these countries may have not been effective from really reducing the amount of their population catching this virus. So let me go ahead and uh, play this for you. I want you to hear this for yourself. And uh, once again, I want everybody to give your opinion about how you, what is your opinion about this particular topic that I'm bringing to the forefront. And I know everyone has heard about uh, California. As I said before, we're on a lockdown. Um, You can't be out between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. unless you are a essential worker. Luckily, I'm a essential worker. I work in mental health. I I have seen the coronavirus firsthand, so I do know it does exist. Now, how it got here, that can be debated. That's open to debate. Everyone has the right to their opinion. Um, And let me go ahead and play this for you, ladies and gentlemen, and let you hear it uh, for yourself. This is a show that I listen to. It's a radio show that comes out of Great Britain. And this is what's going on over there and how the people over there feel about it. Think about it and give your opinion in the comment. To answer Matt Hancock's question, by the way, about whether the lockdown um, will work or not, it won't work because the previous lockdown didn't work either. We know that the, the pandemic had peaked before the lockdown started. So the lockdown was just a kind of uh, window dressing on the part of the government designed to frighten us into thinking that this problem was, well, A, a more serious than it actually is, and B, within the government's control. We've seen around the world the examples of countries which have had the most extreme lockdowns have fared no better and often worse than countries which have had no lockdowns. Peru had the worst lockdown in the world, the strictest rules. Peru also had the highest from coronavirus. Brazil, on the other hand, didn't have a lockdown, did better than Peru. Argentina, strict lockdown, um, but, but, but a, high, a high death rate. So there is no correlation between lockdowns and, and, and the virulence of the, of the disease through the population. What, what do we do, though, James? And this is the bit that, because I hear all of that, but then I, you know, I, I hear Hancock and others say, well, yeah, we've got this amount of people in hospital. We've got this amount of people on a ventilator, this amount of people dying. So well, I, hope if... not, I hope they're not on ventilators, Ian, because we've, we've established now that ventilators actually uh, actually help finish you off. But I, but I, I, I take your point. Yeah, I mean, we that's that's the there. argument that comes from the NHS is that, look, whatever yeah. you think about it, we have an NHS issue as well as a COVID issue. Um, this is what the government tells us, yes. I, I think that the, the thing behind this that they're pushing is ultimately they have bought into the idea that we must have a vaccine. We cannot get to normal until we've had a vaccine. Well, you heard one announcement, I think was it last week before, about this breakthrough vaccine, and then suddenly it's, it, it dematerialised. Suddenly there were problems with it. Now we're hearing reports of another vaccine which is effective. I don't buy it. I, these... There has never been a successful vaccine for a coronavirus before. It's being rushed out. I think we should all be very, very wary about this vaccine, especially about this talk that it's going to be uh, made compulsory. I mean, imagine if you want to take a, take a flight, you've got to have this, this potentially dodgy vaccine injected in your I think that the time has come for the people to revolt against. Our government has been captured by a cabal of loons. Boris Johnson has to go. Matt Hancock definitely has to go. You, you know, one of the people responsible for you know, Matt. So there it is, folks. Um, that's what they're talking about in uh, Europe or in Great Britain, that uh, there's other countries that have a stronger hold and dictatorship over their population. And they're showing that um, these countries are having saint, they're having spikes as well. I have to be honest, though, that uh, other countries in the world have done a better job of dealing with this situation than uh, America, the country I live in, of course, we all live in, those of you that are listening to me, because they nationalize their approach to it. Whether you disagree with the lack of uh, the dictatorship of how they're able to control their people, we know that government, the word government does mean control, and it does have an impact on um, the citizens. Um, 
we still are in America. We still have certain freedoms. So we think we have to always uh, question uh, government, question leadership. And um, and I know there's people out there who believe that this isn't real. It's just another way to do uh, it's, it's a form of population control, which uh, you can make an argument about that because uh, there's this whole thing called a uh, herd immunity, which is another is a way to sort of um, impact um, the population that you know that you don't want to deal with that population. You don't want to have to figure out how you're going to feed these bellies and employ all these people. Uh, one of the things that he said in there that I thought was powerful was about Brazil. Because Brazil at one, at, had one of the highest levels of this virus. And a lot of the black people that lived in the uh, favelas, uh, were they were dying. And the Brazilian government, um, their president was just like tr Donald Trump. He didn't uh, really give a care. And then he caught it himself, so they say. And um, they've had a, they put a strict lockdown uh, in, um, in Brazil. And it still did not have complete effects. Let me, let me, uh, let me look at something right here. Um, let's talk about Wuhan, China right now. Okay. China imposed a strict lockdown in late January. Research found that the lockdown combined with other prior policies, as well as population behavior changes may have reduced the reproduction rate of this particular virus from 3.9% to 1.3%, a big change, but not enough to prevent the spread of this virus. In Wuhan, the reproduction rate did not drop to 0.3%, a level at which the disease can truly be beaten until after centralized coronavirus measures, as I said before, had been put into place. It was centralized, corona, uh, uh, centralized quarantine. Let me read that again. Until after centralized quarantine, let me say that, measures had been put into place. It was centralized quarantine, uh, quarantine that, that beat this virus in Wuhan, not in lockdown. Do you hear what I'm saying? So for us in America, when our governor like where I'm at in California, Greg Newsom puts us on a lockdown due to this virus. We got it bad out here in America. And I had showed you a chart not too long ago that we have it and we, we have it, we have it bad in America, but we have it bad in California and throughout the country. I know South Dakota, it's going buck wild up there because the governor in South Dakota has uh, refused to encourage the population to use certain protective measures. In California, we've got a map where we have these purple zones, orange zones, light color zones. Purple zones are the zones where you have high population and you have very, very high spread. As a result, Newsom, the governor of California, put us on a lockdown. There may be potential for other lockdowns around the country. I know people, the militias out there, you saw in Michigan, they didn't like it. And they stormed the state building, put the, had, their, had their guns and everything, and you didn't see the police rough them up, okay, the white militia out there. Here you have Wuhan, China, which was the epicenter, they say, of this virus. And the reason why they were able to defeat it is because they centralized their efforts. And, of course, they have a dictative country where they can tell people what to do because it's communist. Right. But the point of the matter is there, the, the study is saying that centralizing the centralizing the approach to dealing with this actually brought it down to about 0.3 percent level. The problem with us in America. Because we're so knuckle headed to a certain degree. As we are a country, a society on this planet, we call Earth. The problem with Americans is our arrogance, our, I think, our freedoms and our ability to do what we want to do and say what we want to do. Although freedoms and freedom of speech and all that is important, it's also becoming our downfall because under Trump, and I'm putting it on Trump because he's the president, even though he does not want to leave the White House, 
under Trump, there was no centralized system of how to fight and to attack this virus. Matter of fact, there was evidence that came out that the Trump administration was doing everything they could to marginalize the doctors and the scientists. They politicized this virus, and that's why we're in a situation that we're in right now. That's why um, California, although California was one of the first states to really take on having a lockdown and take on taking certain measures, what we're finding out is that even the lockdown has not worked. It didn't work the first time in California. It's it seemed to bring some it seemed to bring some things down, but as we're seeing, um, things are spiking up. And the reason why, in my humble opinion, why this is spiking up like it is, is because you really can't control human behavior, human nature, humans are social creatures. People are still going to gather, especially young people in college. They're going to do what they're going to do. And unfortunately, because we don't pay attention to the history of what happened in what the Spanish flu in 1918 and how people didn't follow certain measures. And as a result of those certain measures, that, that flu, that virus at that time, it spiked up because people did not follow basic common sense. Now, we're lucky that we don't live in a country like Mexico or maybe even China, where if you were re to refuse to wear a mask or do something of that nature, they would billy club you, maybe pull out their gun and uh, take your life. It has happened in Mexico. And I'm sure in, if we were in a place like China, um, you wouldn't be able to go into a store and mouth off. They would definitely um, um, give you a punishment because of the way those these, these some of these countries are. But... Let me get back over here as I get to conclusion of this program again. Uh, I want to put this on the screen. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a program about the, vi about the vaccine. Should you take it? Why, why you should take it? Why you shouldn't take it? And what are your rights as an American citizen to actually decline? I've got the data. Well, I got the, I, I did a, 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 I did a podcast where I talked about this. I looked at the data. I looked at the, the, uh, the documentation out there. And there are some presidents for the government, local government, state government, national government, to say you got to take this under certain circumstances. Then there are circumstances where you do have the right, as I had said before, where you do have the right to refuse um, such treatments that you don't deem as safe for you. And that's the thing that's trip about this is that how are they going to get everybody to buy in on this when a lot of people are skeptical about this virus? A lot of people don't believe in taking, um, because they got to give you a virus to actually destroy the virus. They're also putting things in you. And we know through history and time that vi these viruses have mercury in it, have various things in it that can be harmful to the human body. And we know it's black people, which you notice that they're asking us to take to, to, to uh, they're asking us black people in particular, please come out and be a part of studies and black people feel the way we feel about it is because of the history of what, um, science and medicine has done to black people going all the way back to the Tuskegee um, Alabama experiment where they gave black men syphilis purposely to study it and see how it breaks down the body. And they're going to have spokespeople. They're going to have black spokespeople that are going to come out. They're going to have black doctors that are going to come out. They're going to have a lot of people that are going to come out that look like us who are going to try to convince us that these things can't happen because you have this black doctor and you have that black doctor and I'm telling you, a lot of things can happen when you have uh, virus uh, uh, vaccines that have not had enough time to be uh, studied. They have not had enough time to be uh, a trial run. And, uh, and then now you want to throw it on the public, just as they did with, with the measles vaccine, as I said before, which ended up killing a lot of children because it was not clearly or appropriately a study. Now you've got the FDA who does have clauses where they can make emergency procedures 
to allow these this uh, vaccine that Pfizer has been talking about to be released to the public so that doctors can convince you in and in, in nurse practitioners, medical practitioners can convince you that this is the, the way to go. So that's where, that's, that's where we're at. Um, I want everybody to uh, give your opinion. Now, let me read this before I, I end this uh, program. Remember, Spain was getting hit really hard by a lot of cases. Spain cases, however, is that spikes in death plateaued around March 25th to March 30th, just 10 to 15 days after the lockdown and began to fall about 18 days after the lockdown. Put plainly, it appears to be the case that the virus affections were already declining before Spain went into a lockdown. So Spain's another country that was, remember Spain was buck wild. They had complete lockdown in Spain. No, don't you come out. The studies are showing that the, the, the virus was already declining prior to them um, going into a lockdown. Let me go, let me go over this again. What we see in Spain in the cases, however, it was that the spike in deaths plateaued around March 25th through 30th, just 10 to 15 days after the lockdown had ended. Okay. So this is very, this is very important stuff, folks. And began to fall about 18 days after the lockdown put plainly, it appears to be that the case of this virus infection were already declining before Spain went into a lockdown, dramatically declining, a dramatic decline began two to five days before lockdown in Spain. Notably, the virus began to be a huge news item in Spain around March 5th and 10th as the regional governor governments noticed community spread began closing down large events for example you know they you know they have cathedrals they have catholic churches they have a variety of religious um they put restrictions on over a thousand people on march 9th and on march 12th schools began to be shut down but perhaps most notably in spain all on march 13th spain declined a state of a uh, declared let me correct that Spain declared a state of alarm, a state of emergency, which put the whole country on alert. School cancellations, large assemblies were banned. Extensive public notice. These kinds of measures are all much uh, tighter fit to Spain's mortality pattern. So even though Spain went through all of that, they were declining in their rates with this virus even prior to going into the lockdown, China was aggressive with their centralization of this, as I said before, and they were able to bring it down to 0.3% in their, in their, in their percentages. California was already on one lockdown. And here we are again on a second lockdown because the first lockdown didn't work. Then this is another thing that I want to bring up. And I probably will talk about this in other videos but I got to be honest and be an honest broker is the best way to be. I had my man, brother, uh, AM one, AM one peace to you. AM one. He said, well, you know, lockdowns cause more people to possibly pass away and die. Well, this is what they're finding out in a study. And I'm going to be talking about this because people, there's a lot of people that are dying of other sicknesses, meaning heart attacks, bad kidneys, hypertension. They're dying because they're not going to the hospital because they're afraid to catch this virus as it's running rapid in the, in the hospitals. They're also not going because it may take them a long time to get an appointment if the medical establishment is so focused on this virus. So they tell us. 
So they're saying there's 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 information coming out that a lot of people who are dying are not necessarily dying of this virus. They're dying of some other uh, comorbidity, some other condition that they have failed to go to the hospital to get help for because of their fear of catching this virus. So, and because of the lockdown, for example, being locked down and being isolated has also increased mental health issues where you have people now committing or suicide and taking their life. And in return, discouraging people from going in for their checkups and seeing their doctors because they've got chest pain or they got something. And so what's happening is, is that no one is addressing the death rates of people that are dying at home. And when it has nothing to do with this virus, but it has something to do with their initial medical condition that they had. And I'm wondering if that's being lumped in with the, with the, with the numbers that they're putting into play with this virus. I wonder how many of those numbers are, because I know that there's uh, there, they were saying that black people were additionally, uh, uh, additionally, uh, most addition, most uh, uh, disproportionately affected, excuse me, by this virus. Yet there's no package for us. I live in California. Governor Newsom has given millions of dollars in housing to illegals that are here. They get a package because they're affected by this virus, but black people are very highly affected. No package for us. Right. So since they say that we're disproportionately affected and I talked about this before on other videos. So everybody, I want you to um, definitely like the video, subscribe. You are listening to information, man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. Most definitely. I would like you to uh, share this video and all your social media. Cause I think is very important, but I want you to give me your honest opinion about what you think about this thing called uh, a lockdown. Is it effective? Does it not work? And I'm telling you, uh, if you go online, there's a, the article is under the AEI. It's an institution. It's a, it's a science institution. It's entitled Lockdowns Don't Work. Put that in the search engine. Read it for yourself. There's a whole bunch more information in there and I just couldn't get into all of it but I think you got the basic idea of where I'm going where I'm going at with this particular um this video this uh this truth tell the truth so we we need to examine what's really effective we know what's effective is that we don't want people getting together in large assemblies we know it's effective to get out there and get tested we know that According to what they tell us that it's effective, wearing the mask supposedly reduces the amount of effects of catching this virus. There's also studies out there or, or there's articles out there that say that we may not need to be concerned about surfaces because this virus is more airborne. So that's, that's that out there. So we can, you can examine a variety of different materials to come to your to your conclusion. But I would say most effectively, we know that the elderly, the older people are definitely um, are at an impact. I want to tell everybody, be safe, be safe with your family, wash your hands. Another thing that I'm noticing out there too, do you notice folks that there's another run on toilet paper? I went, you go to Walmart, you go to these stores, all of a sudden toilet paper is starting to decrease in its abundantness. What is that all about? Right? Uh, all of a sudden there was plenty of uh, toilet paper to be, to be gotten not too long ago, and now that's starting to take a dip. And I think big business is playing a lot of games with us because they want to create, you create a demand, you create panic, and then you come in and you dominate with, with the profit because you can now increase the amount of these items that you know people are going to be fighting over. And I don't understand why toilet paper would be so, if, if you're going in a, if we're in a pandemic, there's a lot of other things that would be more of a priority than even a toilet paper because you can go, you can do it old school and use an old rag like your grandmother or, or your grandparents' parents used to do back in the day where they would use a rag that they would use to clean yourself and then they would clean that rag. If you had to go old school, many of us could go old school like that. We that's that's not see us those of us that are you know Gen Xers and baby boomers and people like that. We know 
we know how to adapt to this situation because like myself, many of us grew up without cell phones and all these all these convenience that you, that a lot of the young people have today. A lot of us know what it's like to go without certain uh, certain things. So with that said, let me end this particular show. Make sure you share and everybody. I appreciate everybody for coming over and um, and being here. Peace to you all. And I hope you have a great day. Share the video. I'll be probably going live on my channel sometime this week because I've got time off from the from work. And so I got time to do some things. Take care, everybody. Peace.